In this video, I want to teach you guys how to get perfect results with automotive painting and hydrographic printing. I'm going to teach you guys all of my tricks and secrets because I'm ready to pass on my knowledge. Before we get into it, I need to tell you guys about the pros and cons to hydrographic printing. The pros, once you're good, you will always have work and a dollar in your pocket. You'll be able to refurbish anything back to brand new and make people extremely happy. The cons, it's not as easy as it looks. It's a slow process where mistakes and random accidents can happen very often. And it's very unhealthy over irresponsible and long-term exposure. If you are not good at simple masking techniques, then hydrographics and automotive painting is not for you. Quick disclaimer, uh, I never had my videos backed up and my iPhone crashed thanks to error 14. I lost everything, but luckily Google backed up the videos. Problem is the quality is very decreased, so I apologize for that, right? Very helpful tutorial, take it in guys. What's up everybody, Michael here from Trini Hydrographics. I was supposed to make a video like this a long time ago to teach you guys how to do hydro dipping. And um, I just never got a chance. So, long story short, doing some wing mirrors here for now. Um, no priming needed because it's already painted. But the first step is to use a cleaning solution and a clean cloth, preferably a light color or white. And you want to use the cloth to clean your parts with. Now you gotta designate your right hand if you're right-handed to clean with and your left hand to hold underneath the part. Under here is contaminated so you never wanna switch hands because then you will get the contamination on top. So designate one hand for prep. That's your first most important tip for today. Otherwise you're gonna get fish eye and you wouldn't know where it came from. Um, I'll make a separate video to show you guys primers, but I'm going to leave out that part for now. The next step, I'm using 400 grit sandpaper. Because this is already painted and in good condition, 400 is the roughest I would use before laying my base coat. If it's any coarser, when I base coat it, even when I clear coat it, the scratches will reflect underneath. So you want to use 400 grit and you want to sand the part very well even want to get into all the corners and stuff. You see all those corners there? You want to get it all up inside there because you don't want any flake and paint. Okay, you want to do a good job for people. All those little corners and edges. Always sand your edges. Sand the first thing. Flatten it out. Right, uh, another part I'm going to do today is plastic. It's really slightly textured. You probably can't see it from here. But um, I should be able to just sand it down smooth with either a 320 grit or a 400 grit, uh, clean it, and then I'm going to apply plastic adhesion promoter to this before I paint it. Uh, if it was a rough texture and I wanted it smooth, I would use the adhesion promoter for plastics, and then I would have used a filler primer, waited for that to dry, and then sanded it smooth. But thankfully, the texture on this isn't too bad. So I'm going to skip out the filler primer step. That's a lot of work if I had to use it. So first I'm going to clean it up. So I use auto color, spirit white. In case anyone out there is wondering. And a clean white cloth. Clean it up. Wipe out all of these. You want to get all the corners. It doesn't hurt to be too clean. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's time to sand with the 400 bit. The 
see the texture. I'm gonna try the sound, it's as smooth as possible. Okay, so this has been fully scuffed, as you can see. Got out most of the texture. When you're sanding stuff for customers, make sure you do a good job. You wanna get all up in those lines and everywhere too, to get out some excess dirt. You wanna make sure you fully sand everything properly. Because you want your work to last, you want the paint to hold. So make sure you do a good job. Now I'm going to clean it. Clean the edges too. Want to get all those edges. Alright. Let's I'm going to flip the cloth, always get a clean side and keep cleaning. I'm going to get all inside all those little edges too. Remember to never ever let your designated hand ever touch the top. You want to make sure this thing is perfectly clean. So when you paint, the paint doesn't space out and get fish eyes, right? Flip the cloth, make sure your cloth face is always clean. You don't want to spread grease, you want to wipe it off. Off. Then don't forget all your little edges. Yeah. Okay, let's get to the paint in part now. Okay, so I'm just going to show you guys what I did really quickly. I mixed my preferred color as I was running low, which is this color gunmetal. Right, which you see right here on my glove. This one right over, right there. So, what I did was, I first put silver. Right, silver. Then I added black. Right, to get a basic color around here. Then, I added blue. This is high performance blue by Ford. This is my preferred blue. And the result was, moving on, I just did a last mix right here. Mix it up and show you guys. Right, so the result is as follows. It's still a bit different. I want to work on it a little more. But this is going to be my base color for the carbon fiber that the customer chose. So seeing that they were pretty close, I just mixed the two together to get back the color, which is this color right here, the top one, the biggest blob. So ready to paint. Okay, so I'm showing you guys all my secrets today. When mixing your paint with 2K reducer, well, what I do is I use old water bottles, right? I cut them and dry them out and stuff, and I put the paint in. And to mix in 2K reducer, this is the best way. You want to add just enough so that when you mix it, hold on, I'm going to press pause for a bit just to mix. Right, so you want to add just enough that it's thick enough that when you put it on the sides, it doesn't get transparent. It holds the color, right? Yet, when you lift it up on the stick, it drips freely. You guys got that? So you see it's not it's not blobby or too thick, it drips freely. And when you lean it to the side, it holds the color. You see how it only now got kind of transparent. But when you lean it, it holds the color good enough. That's a perfect mix right there for base paints. Automotive base paints. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna use is the adhesion promoter or the plastic primer. Got it right here. 
the brand I use is Autocolor, Penta Autocolor. It's actually a brand of Nexa, which is out of the UK. I hear Bulldog is a great adhesion promoter also. So, I'm going to use a strainer and then add the adhesion promoter as is. No reducer needed. Then we could get ready to paint. With plastic primer, you want a very fine spray because it's really thin. So that's too fine. Gonna open back my gun flow and bring the needle back a bit. Just a little more. Okay, the extra plastic primer, I put in a little too much. Just gonna open out the gun a little more and pour it right back into the bottom. Anything that doesn't have hardener in it, you could reuse. Always remember that. I'm not going to bother to clean out the bottle with thinners, lacquer thinners. I'm just going to go ahead and pour the base paint right in. First I'll just spray it out. I'm even going to use the same strainer. So as I just showed you guys how to mix the base paint with the 2K reducer, I'm just going to go ahead, pour it in to the paint gun. I didn't bother to rinse out the gun because the uh, Adhesion promoter is colorless. It's also in very small amounts, which won't affect the paint at all. Might actually help if the holes are those wing mirrors, since I didn't use any primer. I decided to start back on the plastic piece first because with any primer except for filler primer you want to paint it let's say within 10 to 15 minutes after application because you want that primer to still be like a little bit tacky for the paint to hold it. Test three. Here we go. also test it out on the edges first. This coat is a lighter coat. That way, in case you got any contamination on it, you won't get too much pressure.
Oh, we start on the edge of the As this base paint dries really fast, I could go ahead now and apply my second coat. One thing I forgot to mention, you want to always make sure that your spray gun is clean. I have four main spray guns. One for priming with filler primer, one for base paint and other primers that don't require hardener. That same one I use also for painting with base paint, as well as paints that do require hardener. And then I have a paint gun just for clear coats alone. I don't mess with that one. The only thing that goes in there is clear coats. And the other spray gun, which I'll get to showing you guys, is for activator alone. No paint. More information about my spray guns and where I purchased them is also available in the Money Saving Tips for Hydrographics video link in the description below. Now, I don't know if you could see it, but I started off a little heavy right here and I got some fish eye. But by the time I put on my second coat, it will all be gone. So here we go. Fish eye. And it's gone. So is my team. That's experience for you. After a while of doing this enough times, you're going to be able to mix just enough paint. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and clean out my spray gun. And tomorrow, we will get to hydro dip in those parts. With metallic paints, I usually let them sit overnight. 
Um, if you're using paints with a lot of silver in it, I definitely recommend spraying them over with binder. Binder is a colorless base paint that seals the metallics because when you hydro dip stuff that has a lot of silvers in it, especially on certain films that do not expand when you activate them, instead they shrink, you get a lot of concentrated activator that causes the metallics to shift. So by spraying them over with binder, you get excellent results. It totally seals the paint and you don't even have to leave it overnight. You could just leave it for like, uh, let's say two hours or so, and then hydrate it. guys I'm back parts are all painted and looking good what you gotta do is blow off any dust so you got some dust right there and if there's any dust in the paint from the paint gun what you could do is I have none on this because my paint gun was pretty clean but you want to look at the, the glare on the paint and if you do happen to see any little specks you take a blade and just like scrape them off now of course you want to do this when the paint is really dry i let these parts sit overnight there are some small small little dust specks that was in my paint you know just cut it with a blade and blow it off okay so activator you don't want anything else in your activator gun but activator shout out to jim urbano for teaching me that he gave me some really good advice when i was starting up and this gun I use is a Devilbis finish line. It has a really broad, fine spray. For activator, my choice is Hydrovator by Express Chem. Note all of the warning signs, which is why it's so important to wear your respirator. Because I am not from the United States, I get a buddy who imports chemicals to bring it in for me. That saves me a lot of cost. You just got to submit the MSDS and all those required documents. One time I ran out of Hydrovator and I did use TWN's activator. And to be honest, it smelled the same. It pretty much worked the same. And I would basically say it's quite possibly the same exact chemical, just rebranded. And what I want to show you guys is one of my top tricks for stretching and modifying my activator to get really good results and it saved me a lot of money and I'm going to include this in the money saving tips for hydrographics course in the description below. Okay so here's my activator gun again. It's the finish line by the Vilvis. The FLG5 in case you guys are wondering you see it etched in there on the nozzle. So how I have my gun set up for activating I got the flow open all the way just about as far as it could go as well as the fan width. This is the size of the fan. If I open it out, it's going to go wide. And if I screw it in and tighten it, it's going to close down. I want this open all the way and I want the flow open all the way. I also got a small filter inside of there, which I haven't checked in a while. So now will be a good time. Oh, it's all twisted. There's some dirt in there too. But anyways, I got this small filter in here like this. It goes into the gun. That's just to filter out any particles in the activator, just in case. But when I'm filling the gun, I also, that's like my secondary filter. You don't want that to get clogged up at all. So what I do is I also use a strainer, a 190 micron strainer, and I put it over the gun. Then I take my concoction mix and I pour it right in. So there's absolutely no particles in there to mess up my activator. So when it comes out of the gun, it is completely clean. Next, you wanna make sure your compressor is on. And check the PSI. This is the PSI I paint at. 
I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's a little above 20. So that's the pressure I usually paint at. I want to drop it to around 18 PSI. So right now it's on 20, 20 as you guys would see. Right, that's about 18. Um, this air pressure valve here on the gun, I have just about open all the way because I want my pressure to be exact here. So it looks something like this. Oh, sh Okay, so that pressure is actually a little too low, which is why you got to test it. I checked and I made sure I had no kinks in the holes. Um, so it's actually on, yeah, like almost 19. I just put it up a little bit. I tested it on my hand to feel the pressure. I know it off my heart, but I know. So you always got to check it, even though you put it on the valve. You want to experience something like this. That's how you want it. Wide and fine. So you want your pressure such that it's not too much to displace the film but it's not too little that the activator does not atomize properly. You want a really fine spray without blowing out the film. I want to check to make sure my hose is on the correct setting. Gentle shower and that the pressure is good. For the sides, I use two inch masking tape to dam the film. So I want to pull these two pieces out and have them ready. Make sure you have a timepiece, either a phone close by or a watch or a clock on the wall. I wanna make sure my wire hooks are ready. I'll show you guys why in a moment. I got them on a line close to the dip tank. The tape is to prevent them from sliding into each other. I got small hooks, close pins, and the big hooks for big or heavy parts. For personal protective equipment, I use nitrile gloves, which I often reuse. My respirator is a 3M, this one with the blue rubber lasts really long. The grey one dry rots fast, but this is a good mask. I've had it for over a year. I just change the cartridges every so often. Purchase links for all these are in the description below. For this job, the customer and I decided to use this particular carbon fiber film. You want to keep it stored in a dry place. This is the best, easiest carbon fiber film I have ever used. If you all need to get great quality film at an excellent price, I give away all the contact info to my top two suppliers in the Money Saving Tips for Hydrographics course in the description below. Okay, so you want to make sure your cutting table is extremely clean. You want to blow it off with an air jet. I use a 4x8 foot piece of galvanize on top of a 4x8 foot sheet of construction ply. I got more tips about this and my shop setup in the money saving tips for hydrographics course in the description below. And you want to just take the jet and blow off all of the dust. Blow it all off. Make sure the table is super clean. Wear your respirator. You want to have tape close by to tape off your film. I usually reuse tape. I believe in recycling. Plus it saves a lot of money. So I got my tape close by. I'm gonna make sure all the corners have tape. I'm gonna start with the smallest object first as a test run. Always start with your smallest object and you wanna place your tape spaced out like this because you want your film to expand. I've seen guys on YouTube doing all sorts of crazy stuff that never worked for me. That, out of, out of everything I've tried, is the best way to tape film. All films are different, no two pattern films are the same. So, I recommend doing it like this. This will work on all your films. Then you want to cut it with the blade. So the tape helps the film from curling in on itself. There's also another way of cutting film where you just put small slits around the edges. This works, but for me, it's not the best way because where I live is in the Caribbean and it's extremely humid. So the film usually curls in on itself a lot. But however, it does work for smaller pieces. Make sure everything's smooth, there's no dust. You don't want to put on your face mask just yet in case you got a blue bubbles, but you want to put on your gloves. You want to lay it down in the water. Blow off any dust from both objects. You can go ahead and lay it down in the water. All right, bring in the dam. The film is expanding. Now with this film that expands, I could close in the dam almost all the way. 
on the sides and the corners because it's going to shrink again. All right? But you still want to leave a little bit of room for expansion. I say less, like less, a little less than an eighth inch on this film. Some films require half an inch to expand. Some maybe even more. Right, so this film shrinks, so I can bring it in pretty close. Let me show you guys how close I brought it in there. See that? It's almost, it's just about touching. I have a little bubble, which I'm not going to worry about because the object is pretty small. If you don't have to worry about a bubble, leave it alone. Respirator on. Now here, you want to look at the glare on the water. So let's see what you do. Not a lot of activator. Just enough to glass off the film. You don't want to put too much on there. And this is at an angle, so I'm going to dip from here first. Feel it. Now, I'm going to leave it under water. Give it a light shake. I think grabs it. Here. Take it to the side. And that. Got my clothes handy. Because I'm going to leave it under water for five minutes before rinsing. Just let me see. Just in case I put a little too much activity. So I'm going to check my timepiece. And I know the time. I'm going to wait five minutes. While we wait five minutes, I'm just going to go ahead and wash off our lips up. Then I'm going to go ahead and dip the neck teeth. Don't want to waste time in business. I got an old towel here to dry off my gloves. I don't want to waste gloves. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and measure and cut out all the pieces to save time. Show you guys what I mean. Okay, so I want to check this thing, make sure it's clean. There's a little dust speck right there. Okay, now with wing mirrors, you want to put them down perpendicular to each other. So one horizontal, one vertical. That way you get the pattern to be symmetrical especially on carbon fiber. Okay, so now that I got it all measured out, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my film. You see I had to put a corner right here. You gotta have tape on all the sides, all the ends, all the corners. All right, so I'm gonna cut this straight up. It's gotta be in a rectangle shape. Okay, so just a little over six minutes has passed. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out this small piece just to make sure everything went well. That way, I know for sure my settings are good for my other pieces. That looks pretty good. I just have a little bubble, which is expected on the elbow, on the corner, which would attract the air bubble going in like that, you know what I mean? So I'll rinse it for like a minute. And then to save time, I'm gonna put it back into the water. But everything looks good, it looks pretty good. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. So I got all the PVA slime off, that's the water soluble side of the film. So now I can let it go back into the water. Sometimes with some films, if you don't rinse it within that like five to let's say eight minute period, sometimes the pattern fades a bit. Okay, so I cut out all the film. Now one thing you do not want to do is get water on your table or on your film and mess up your film. Okay guys, here we go, sticky side down, for me it's tape side up. Mask is off. I have a little mishap right there, but that's okay. I'll miss the mishap. Let the film expand, this film expands first. Then shrinks. It's always good to have extra teeth lying around. I'll show you guys why.
for example, on the little piece that missed, I got this little piece of tape right here. I'll just dam it off like this. Right, there we go. Get the object. You gotta really see how you wanna dip it. So I'm gonna go in like this. To get more pieces out of 45. You wanna look at the glare? You wanna see the reflection of the light? I want to put up the pressure just a touch more. I find the spray could have been a little thinner. Luckily for me, this film is very forgiving. Because I don't want to get anything stuck in there. Okay, so I'm going to put some more pressure on this side. Just like that. I'm going to check my time. Make sure the tank is clean. Come back on my whole setting. And I want to dry my hands a little bit. So, see if this is clean again. Dry my hands off really good after rinsing them. And I'm going to go again. Not wasting any time. Oh, before I forget, I got to turn up the pressure a little bit. Right now it's on 18, I'm putting it on 19. Right at 19, PSI. I'm trying to do a better job at this here now. There we go. off any dust, let it expand, it's expanding, now it's shrinking, now close it in all the way, and it can start damming off now, as you see it's not a perfect rectangle so I had to handle my dam. Get my object, make sure there's no dust. Put on my respirator. I want to look at the glare on the water while I activate it. Much better, much better activate it. Oh, that's so much better. A 90 PSR. You see on the film, we made the film separate, it kind of holds together. That's a sign of good activation. You can say on the side to do it again. Get my wire hook. hook. And by now, the first mirror should be ready for it. Let's see how it came out. You do not want to bounce the sides of your hip tank. I almost hit this now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit. As I said, this film is really forgiving, but there's some things that would not have worked just now. Now just put it on the water you want to rinse, and you want to keep it wet up all the time. Some people use flour and see a But for me, that works the best. Except you on my car, it seems that we have to be badly. If you lose bubbles, that's a PVA film. 
Yeah, let me start off before you put it back in the water. I mean, it looks pretty good. Not perfect, but it's pretty good. Okay, I kind of bent a bit, which I'm not too happy about. Let's see what the other one is. All in all, the print is really, really good. Really, really good. If you let it dry, sometimes you can get put dry in the pattern. So I keep it wet at all times. So that should be good. And I'll dip it twice to get out all the bubbles. One, two. Make sure there's no bubbles on the object. I'm going to go ahead and hide it the other one. I'm going to change my gloves because these gloves got soaked. Dry my hands, of course, before I do that. Put my gloves on. Now, I just want to go over this with you guys really quickly. On things like deck finishers, if I was to hydro dip, there's some dust right there. If I was to hydro dip from here first, the distance between here and here is too much so it could actually cause the pattern to pull in and stretch. So on something like this, I would actually go in this way because the distance from here and here is shorter, which will actually make contact on the film on these two sides, which will hold the film in place. So when the film is, is going through the deck piece here, it won't stretch. So I'm going to actually dip it going in this way, not this way. This way will cause too much a stretch, but this way will hold the pattern together. Okay, I want to make enough space for this next piece of film. It's going to be a big one. Make sure there's no dust. There's a piece right there. This is where experience comes in. A big piece of film I'm going to drop in by myself. Look at that. Straight down and holes on the water. This is an excellent film. It doesn't only look good, but it's really easy to work with. So as you see, it's expanding. It's going to expand. I'm just going to hold it in place right here. It's expanding. It's expanding. Okay, and here it starts to shrink. So I'm going to close it in all the way. Films that shrink after they expand, you don't have to leave any space on. Okay. If it doesn't expand, you're going to have to leave a lot of space around the edges. Sometimes a quarter inch, sometimes a half inch. Sometimes even more. You just want to kind of experiment to see how your film works. Okay? Right. Okay, so here we go. There's no dust on it. I already checked. And I'm going to do two passes with the activator. You want to always look at the glare. Glass. Glass door. A little dry piece right there. Good. And remember, we're going in this direction. I don't want to block you guys. There we go. Wish me luck. Okay. That was a bit sketchy, dude. I shouldn't have given the bottom any priority because no one really sees that. But it looks pretty good. Thankfully, the spaces for the vents and the deck didn't bend the film too much. If I went in the other direction, I would have been screwed. It would have looked wobbly. Trust me. Now I'm going to go ahead and rinse out. 
the last mirror that I did. Now I'm going to put this down. I'm not dipping anything else today. So I'm going to hang it up right here. Out of the way. And it's time to bring up and rinse. There you go. This one came out really good. Yep. That's perfect. I got the same bend right here that I did on the other one. But once they're both the same, that won't look too bad. I guess I couldn't avoid that due to the tape. But it looks pretty freaking good, dude. Looks really good. I'm really happy about the camera. They both came out good. Like I said, this film is really forgiving. If you make slight mistakes, it probably won't matter. I got a little piece of touch up right below there. I'm going to show you guys how to do touch up also. So nice it looks, look at that. Beautiful. Real nice. I love this film, dude. This film is the best. I'm telling you. This is the film you want to use. Okay, so most of the slime is off. The shells are not going to have any bubbles anymore. So I'm just going to go ahead and hang it up. Two dips into the water. One. And two. Get out all those bubbles. Right. I'm going to hang it up right here. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out the next one. And then I'm going to rinse all. I'll probably show you guys that too. Guys, I'm back. Let's see how this one came out. I'm pretty confident it came out good, but we'll see. Wash off all the slime and I'm going to rinse out all of them. Notice how I don't let it get dry at all. I keep it wet. I let it sit on the water for six minutes just in case, just to be safe. With solid colors without metallics, you can wait like three minutes, two minutes. I never really take the chance. I always leave it for at least five minutes just in case unless I'm in a real hurry. Right. I let that activator settle because you don't want it to strip the paint. Let the paint cure a little bit on the water. You got to keep it wet, but you also want to get the top priority because that's where everyone's seeing. See how that looks? Oh, you guys can't see. There we go. It looks pretty good. The lines came out perfect. They're all straight. See if you guys can see that. Alright, come on there. Really happy with how all of these things turned out. That's what you want to do. You don't want to have to be redoing stuff. Because if these came out jacked up, I would have had a repainted it and then redipped it. But first giving it a light sand and then repaint. And then hydro it. I didn't want to have to do that. So find out what films work best with the least chances of mistakes and failures. And get a lot of practice so that your business could be profitable. You don't want to have to be redoing stuff. You want to get stuff on the first try. I'm just going to speed it up right here. But the total rinse time of this initial rinse was two and a half minutes. Okay. Now I'm going to rinse out all of them. I'm going to show you guys how I do that. I take these pieces of wood, rest them up here, like this, and like this. So at first I want to get rid of this little one I did. Sideways like this, you got to be careful those wires will mess you up. Keep it wet still. Even though it's been on the water for so long, I'm just going to keep it wet. All right. Then this one was next. First of all, I'm going to close it together. Right. I'm going to rinse all of them at the same time. You don't want to bounce it onto the edges of the dip tank or the dams. You want to be very careful. But I'm going to rest this down like this. So you get full. 
on the... I'm going to have to touch up right there. I got some in weird there because I went in flat again. And it trapped the bubble. I'm going to show you guys how to do touch up here in a bit. I'm going to keep them all wet. At all times, keep it wet for now. You want to do this rinse for 10 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes. Keep it wet. The last one you hydrate it, you always want to give priority. I can put this guy all the way to the back. Keep it wet, keep it wet. This one. Alright, that's it. Keep all of them wet. So I'm going to do this for 10 minutes, guys. And then it's going to be done. Something I forgot to mention. you got to really make sure you rinse it from all angles. Because if you have PVA slime left back and you try to clear coat it, even though the slime is dry, it's going to get fish eye in the clear coat. That's very important. I learned that the hard way. I was once hydro dipping a tailgate for a Toyota Hilux. And there was water settling and it wasn't washing off the PVA slimy film stuff so point noted and taken you gotta learn from your mistakes in this business so i gotta do a touch up on the mirror right there because it trapped a bubble but it's the only way i could go in with that bit you know that from experience okay okay so the rinse is done i'm gonna take them outside so you guys can get a better look okay so as these parts are due for tomorrow i'm gonna have to touch up and clear coat them today so i'm gonna take my air jet I put up the pressure, raise my pressure. I'm gonna blow up all that water to help us with the water. Next, I'm gonna apply the heat gun. Now, you guys don't need to do all this, but my stuff has got to get done for tomorrow. So, I'm gonna speed it up. Okay, so I had some minor issues with this one, other than the little air bubble, which is expected on the corner. And you see some hesitation lines, which will disappear on the clear coat. I noticed these reactions with the original paint underneath. I'm not sure what caused it. It could be that the activator reacted with the clear coat below that caused crimping. But I'm just going to scrape it out and use my art skills and paint it back. And then clear coat. Oh, and I had a little scratch here. I was telling you guys to be careful, but look at what happened. I wasn't careful. Okay, so I actually did something a little different. I took my finger and I pressed the crimp down as tight as I could. And it's kind of staying down. This one, this one almost disappeared. You see some water came out of it. So I'm just gonna press it down and clear coat it. Okay, so I put on my gloves and I pressed it down as hard as I could. Hopefully the clear coat would mask it. As the sun came out, I didn't worry to use the heat gun. So I'm just gonna leave them out here on the wall to dry and to cure. And then, next step is touch up. When leaving your stuff on the wall, you gotta be careful of wind. Um, anything could happen. With this work, Murphy's Law is very prevalent. So just be careful how you rest down your parts and where you rest them. Okay, I originally learned how to do touch up from Jim Urbano, but instead of using activator, I use my 2K reducer. So what you're gonna need is a really fine detailed paintbrush. You're gonna need your parts, of course. You're gonna need a piece of film. Some films, the ink doesn't come out easily with the reducer, so you know which film you use once it's black based or carbon. Um, you're going to need your base paint, and you're going to need a bottle cap to put the reducer in, which I already did here. So let's get to it. Okay, the first thing you want to do is to start off by disguising the light spots on the lighter colors. So I'm going to need my base paint. I'm going to soften up my paintbrush in the reducer. And then I'm going to put some base paint onto the film. Some right here on the side right there. I'm going to mix this base paint with the ink from the film. So I'm mixing black with the base paint. See how the colors starting to get darker? 
why mix it with the ink? Because when you print over the gun metal, it gets tinted, as you can see. That's the original color, the lighter color, and then it gets slightly tinted. So I want to kind of estimate. So that kind kind of looks like it there. See, I got a little darker. I'm going to go kind of dark just in case, right? And now I want to paint over, starting on the lightest spots first. You don't want too much paint on your brush because it's going to come out too blobby. Okay, that's still a little too light in my opinion. I'm going to go a little darker than that. Okay, so I'm going a little bit darker. I think that's the color right there. That looks a lot better to me. So on inspection, I see another light piece right here. I'm going to make sure you get all of them before moving on to the black. Okay, I got a little too much paint on the brush, so I'm just going to kind of dry it out a little bit. But there's no black ink. All right. And I see another one there. That's the scratch that I got. So I want very little paint on there. Just gonna cover that scratch. Okay guys, it started to rain, so I had to bring everything inside. As you can see, my film got a little wet, but it's dry now. So, it's time to start touching up the blacks. Right, so I'm gonna go on a fresh piece right here on the film, and just kinda dissolve the ink. There's a little bit of silver in there, but that's okay. Right. So you want it nice and concentrated like that, you see, the precision. So that when you got little spots like this one here, that's a little dig that was there originally. I should have probably put some filler on that, but kind of in a hurry. Look at that. Oh, maybe I put a little too much reduced so it looks like it's going to get back silver again. So I'm going to let that dry before I come back. A little more ink on the brush, right? There's a little one right there. I'm going to go ahead and touch that. If you don't like using the paintbrush or you got some really fine detail to do, you could always use the Sharpie Ultra Fine Point Permanent Marker. But the color and tone of the black ink on the film is always the most accurate. Those noises you guys are hearing are the iguanas on the roof. So I'm throw food for them. Alright. I think that's the best I could do right there for now. <laughs> What's that right there? Right, so touch up is complete. Here's where one bubble was. Here's where the other bubble was. Right on the corner where I went in, it trapped air. And yeah, once it's clear coated, it would look a lot better. So we'll see how it comes out. So I forgot to show you guys, when you finish touch up, wash out your paintbrush, right? Some clean 2K reducer. And then wipe it onto a clean cloth. That way you keep the tip safe. And then you want to store it somewhere in a cupboard or something where nothing or no one would get to it. It would have been a bit easier if the paint had more time to sit down and dry as when I was touching it up the base paint kind of dissolved a lot faster than usual. But anyways, I'm using Deltron 4000 clear coat. So I'm going to add four parts of this to one part of the hardener. Right, that's the DCH 3085 hardener. This is my preferred clear coat. Let me show you guys some results I get from this stuff.
I also waited approximately one hour for my touch ups to dry really well because if you clear coat too soon after touch up it'll just get right back to how it was basically the ink that you put back will dissolve into the clear coat so you want to make sure this is dry really well all right before clear coating so i'm going to mix i want to use this bottle cap from a water bottle i collect plastic water bottles so that to me it's the cheapest best thing to use all right so i'm going to use four parts of deltron 4000 clear coat to one part of this dch 3085 hardener i sometimes like to add 10 to 12 percent of the 1493 2k reducer depending on how long my hardener has sat down Sometimes the hardener gets a little thick and I don't get the flow that I would like. Okay, so I want to make sure my gun is ready. This is my clear coat gun, my preferred gun. Um, it's a really cheap gun, it's a 1.4 tip. I'll probably put the link to it on Amazon. It's a really cheap set. I bought it in okay, so I'm getting out all the extra lacquer thinners that I leave in there. So I'm just going to blow it out, get ready, get my strainer ready, mix clear coat. Okay, so the gun is on, the compressor is on, and I put my pressure to around 21 PSI. So, I love this clear coat. I've used all kinds of clear coats. I've used seconds, I've used glass rits, a bunch of stuff, and out of all this one's my favorite. So, four parts. One. Two. Two, right? Then right up to the brim. This should be enough. Hopefully, it's not too. It doesn't fall short. Three and four. So that's four parts clear. So one part hard enough. Go on, any dust in there. One and then oh you got to this is a, a nifty thing to know right here. You got anytime you're pouring hard now, use a cloth and wipe the rim because it's gonna give you trouble to open if you don't. So that's some good advice right there. And then I mix it. Let me get a mix instead. I used to use twigs from outside, but I'm just gonna use a mixing stick since I got some recently. Right, so then you mix it up, and then I add either 0.5, which is a half, or 0.6, 2K reducer. Just a little touch, just to make sure it runs through the gun really nice. And you want to mix it really good. Yeah, this should be enough clear coat. See how much I got? I can't really see, but it should be just enough. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the first coat. Now, some of you guys got to know when clear coating. Flash time is very important. I had issues with flash time because people gave me the wrong advice. They told me 10 minute flash time, which is crazy. So I used to get solvent pop really bad, which is little bubbles in your clear coat. To me, the ideal flash time is around 23 to 25 minutes on most clear coats. This one I usually wait 25 minutes. But I'm going to give you guys a really good tip right now. A very wise, experienced painter once taught me. He said no matter what brand of clear coat you use, no matter what the atmosphere is doing, don't spray on your second coat until the first coat is dry to the touch yet slightly tacky. That's the best advice I ever got because there's times when I lost track of my flash time and I wasn't sure and I felt the first coat and it was still wet and it's a good thing I didn't put on my second coat. So, big shout out to short man from the Ottoman. Respect bro, it's the best advice I ever got painting. Hope you guys like that tip, it's helped me a lot. So, make sure everything in here is clean. I've seen someone in my gun, which is really odd. Yeah, that's weird. There's actually some dust in here. Right, so, 
I'm gonna go ahead and pour the mix into the glass. Always wear a good respirator, it's really important. This stuff could kill you. Now I'm gonna do a test spray first. Seems pretty good. And I'm gonna start on my smallest part just to make sure. This one is always the guinea pig. Okay, so we have a nice cloth. Nice cloth going there. Alright. Yeah. So me, I think the pressure is still a little low. Right, it actually went down for some reason. I'm putting it back on 21. All right. And I'm going to start with the mirrors first. Oh, I forgot to check my time. That's a serious thing right there. I want to time 25 minutes. So it's now... 6.04, I'm going to add 25 minutes on to that. But I say 6.05, so by 6.30, I'm going to do my second pour. Here it goes. Nice and slow. I'm going to get start on the edges first, just like when you're painting. Now it's spraying a lot better. Another good tip is to always look at the clear coat against the reflection. That way you'll know if you've got enough coverage. You want it to glass off. Right? Let's see how the touch up looks. It looks really good. I can barely even see where it was. Alright, so that's one. Oh, another good tip is to press the gun halfway and blow off anything that could have landed on it, any kind of dust. And I forgot to tell you guys one more thing. Always have a pin close by in case flies or anything lands in your paint. Use a pin or a needle to take them out. It was enough clear coat. Wow, it's done. I think I have my spray a little too high. 
just gonna take whatever dregs I have in here. Thankfully, there's dregs. Which is why I always put the strainer back onto the container. Just to finish it off. Because that would mess up everything. Hmm. Definitely do not want to run out of clear coat on your second coat. That would mess up your gloss really well. Okay, so I have, I have just enough for my face coat. Notice how I left out underneath for last so no one sees. Just want to get a little more again. Just to gloss it up. So now we time 25 minutes. So it's now 6:11. So I know that by 6:30 I have to start on this one. I'm of course going to check it by touch. Same thing I was telling you guys. So 25. So by 6:35 or 6:36, if I'm done, I knew. I know that I've been on perfect time. I'll be back. Just want to show you guys something. I see someone in my clay coat, so I got my pen. There's actually a cactus store, and I get a whole bunch of them outside, but you know what I'm saying. So this, I'm going to use my pinky finger as a pivot. I'm just going to try to put it up. There we go. You don't want to scratch the pattern below. Got it up. So by the second coat, it's going to be pretty smooth. Another thing, you want to inspect everything at this point for like runs. Check this out. Actually went a little too heavy on the clear coat here. And you see this run on the edge here. There's a bunch of bubbles in it, you see that? So I'm going to take my clean glove. I'm just going to kind of try to knock it off. See all those bubbles? That won't look too good when it dries. So I'm wiping off the excess without touching the pattern. You've got to be really careful. You don't want to smudge the pattern. So gently rub it off. That's the importance of having one clean gloves. Also for your protection, of course. The next way too is to just like touch the edge and pull off the excess like that. See? Just touch the corner and pull it off. Okay, so I just mix more clear coats. Gonna lessen my flow a little bit, tighten it a little bit, just to save some clear coat because I mix the same exact amount. Okay, it's 29 minutes past. So basically, one more minute. I'm just gonna check in the meantime and get ready. So, the test piece. Good thing it's masked off so I could actually touch without having any issues. It's dry to the touch but it's like it's like slightly tacky. So I know for sure I'm good to go. Alright? Just wanna double check, make sure I have no runs. 
on the corners of the mirrors. Yeah, everything looks good and we're ready to go. Right on time. Well, let me try to get up here to go last night. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Looks pretty good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Experience is the best teacher. You don't want to spray on too much because then you'll definitely get sores on top, even with a good flush time. I'm just making sure I get out gloss because I don't want to have to polish it up tomorrow. I want to be perfect. Okay. There you go. You see any touch up there? Look at that. I don't. I don't think I do, no. It's really hard to see the touch up. It's right there in the corner. Can you see it? The average Joe would never know. Let me just make sure I got enough of that piece. Yep. Yeah. There's a little thing in it though. Okay, I think I will. I just stuck it up to the side of the gun with a little piece of dust. Alright, and again I'm gonna start at the top first. All these freaking bugs, dude.
Very nice on the sides. I don't want to get too much over spray on my other part. I'm trying to spray a leaf in the opposite direction. And just point this spray down away from those other parts. Come on, baby. Just have enough. Yes! You'll see that clear, okay? Mm -hmm. I want to see it under there, but sure. I want to get good covered. Oh, ho. Checking it. I'm checking out the glare, the reflection from the light. Make sure I got a nice gloss. Now painting a car is completely different from painting small parts. It's a totally different application of clay coat when you're painting a car. Okay, and that's it. Look at that. With that imperfection, you could go ahead and get out of here. Okay, I'm gonna out the lights for a little while just because I don't want any bugs around here. They're kind of flying around because it just got dark outside. There's one right there. You see them right there? I don't want them around. I'm gonna turn the lights off and I got an extra tip for you guys. Stick around. Okay, so my tip is that in the next 25 minutes, before the clear coat gets really hard, let's say in the next half hour or 40 minutes, I'm gonna go and peel the tape off of the shifter knob. Um, that way you get a nice flush seam along your clear coat. If you wait too long and the clear coat gets hard, when you take the masking tape off, it's going to pull off the clear coat. You might have to take a blade to cut it if that happens and then peel it off. So just to make it really easy, after 25 or 30 minutes, I'm going to go and take the tape off. And here's another tip on how to clean the paint gun. Okay, so 25 minutes later, excuse all of the singing frogs by the way, I'm going to just touch it just to make sure. Okay, so again it's dry to the touch but it's still a little sticky. I'm going to go ahead and carefully remove all of this masking tape. You don't have to peel it off completely, you just want to separate it from the edge, just like that. See how it's separating pretty easily? I'm going to have to peel it just to get the base. I'm going to be very careful, very, very careful. You don't want anything to touch the clear coat. But it is somewhat dry to the touch, so, you know, that's why it's, you, you're going to be safe just to leave it a little while. There's some weird edges of clear coat right there, I don't know if you guys saw that. So, yeah, 25 minutes, I would say, is a good time. There's some water in there from when I hydrated it. So, I'm just going to go ahead and peel it all off. So you guys can see how nice it looks. It's wet. But that's it. Okay, so this was the mirror with the really bad crimp and the really bad bubble. There's the bubble. I'm gonna put an arrow right there. You could hardly see it. The average eye would never see that. And there was one crimp over there, which is still showing up a lot. And the other crimp was right there, which is hardly showing up. You can hardly see that crimp. So, I made a good decision by not peeling it off. Right? I just kind of, I actually, I never did that before. I learned something today. Just kind of pressed down the crimp and clear coated it over. So once that clear coat is dry, it should be really good. And take my time putting this down. Again, Murphy's Law is so prevalent in this work. Sometimes I think it's a supernatural thing. The kind of weird stuff that's happened to me before. Right. This mirror looks great. Again, no sign of touch up. Look at that. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. Just look at the detail on that pattern. Eh? So good. That's why this is my favorite carbon fiber pattern. It's just insane. Look at that. It's so good. It's almost like the real thing. Yeah. Alright, so here's what I was talking about with the two mirrors being symmetrical to each other. 
see how good that looks tomorrow i'll show you guys how to buff and polish okay guys so two days have passed today is monday basically i finished these on saturday evening and it's now monday morning because i didn't work yesterday but i want to show you something so this mirror right here i don't know if you could see it but there's some solvent pop right where i tried to fill that little dig that was on the original mirror cap right there it is you see it right there by the light so now there's some solvent pop so i'm going to show you guys how to get that back to a nice gloss i'm really glad i did this tutorial video because you get to see all the steps everything and on this one the plastic remember the plastic was slightly textured so it lost some gloss I don't know if you could see it's not like perfect gloss so i'm going to give this one a little polish also right so come on let's go let me show you guys how to get it like glass okay guys final step the polishing you're going to need a few things first and foremost you're going to need 2500 grit sandpaper you could use 3000 but i won't recommend that unless you're using a machine i'm doing this by hand you're going to need what i recommend is this g3 this is Robin Compound. I think to me this one is the best brand. I'll be honest with you all, I used the 3M, but it was a bit slower than this one. And of course, you're going to need a machine with a buffing pad. So, I'm currently using this one. You could use any kind of sponge pad. I used this one before, but as you see, it's all done. It's like dead. It's done its time. And you're going to need a hose with running water. So, let's get to it. Okay, so I'm going to start with the wing mirror first. First thing I want to do is wet my sandpaper. I want to make sure there's no particles on there that could scratch your clear coat. You just want that 25 grit sandpaper alone. No stones, no sand, no dust. Okay, so I got the mirror with the solvent pop on it. I clear coated this piece pretty thick to fill the scratch that was on the original mirror because I didn't put filler I was kind of avoiding that keep back because I didn't really charge the customer for all that work. So I just assumed like the mirrors were smooth. Of course you never know until you start spraying. So I'm going to go ahead and wash this out. Alright, go again. Now you want to rub it down until you see a completely flush haze on everything. I'm going to show you guys what I mean now. Okay, so you see how you can see that little glossy spot right there? That means it's not completely flat. And you see how you can see some orange peel right here? And some really slight solvent pop. That means when I polish it, it's not going to be completely like glass. It's still going to look good, but it won't be perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and sand it down a little more. So I'm going to go a little lower to try to get out that little spot, a little dig. Now you don't want to go too low. Remember, you don't want to touch the pattern, huh? Notice how I keep wetting the sandpaper. It's because you never know. Dust could come out of anywhere. It could be in your clear coat. It could be anywhere. You want to keep washing this thing out. Also, I want the top to look pretty smooth as well. I'm just going to go ahead and rub out the entire top piece. Get all that orange peel out of there. Even though it's really slight. Won't look bad if I polish it down. Alright, and then I'm going to give it a last rub that's really light to get out all those deep scratches from the sandpaper. So now that the sandpaper is a little bit worn down, it will come out even lighter. Remember, you don't want to go down too low, you don't want to touch that pattern because then you're going to have to touch it up and clear coat it again. Or sometimes you even have to redo the whole thing. You don't want to do that. Okay. Let's dry it off. Go outside. Okay, the dig's still there. Still right there. I'm not sure if you guys, you guys see it right there. I'm just gonna leave it. I don't wanna go down too low. That's gonna come back pretty good. No one's gonna see it. All right. So next step is to use the G3 compound. So you gotta open. Just gonna apply it in small amounts. Then I'm gonna take my finger and spread it pretty thin. And I don't wanna leave it on here too long because it's gonna get dry and then it lose the viscosity that we want. Wipe the excess from my finger onto the foam pad. Put on my respirator because I'm really cautious about dust. And foam. 
Now, let me teach you guys this is really, this is really important. When you're spinning your disc, you want your disc to spin off of the edge. Don't ever spin towards the edge. Don't ever do that. You want it to spin off because if the sponge catches the edge, it's going to have some crazy effects. Shit's going to happen. Seriously, you're going to break the part. You might break your face too. So let's go. The machine, this machine spins um, clockwise. So I'm going to spin it off this way. All right. I got it on the lowest setting because it spins really fast. Microfiber towel. Still got a bit of haze right here, very best. But as you guys can see, it's coming back pretty nice. Look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and apply some more G3. Still, I'm spinning away from the edge. Away from the edge. Don't ever spin towards the edge. Shit will be crazy. So now I'm going to wash it off. I'm going to wash off all that compound. I'm going to wash it out of there. Why is that? You got to do it while the compound is still wet. You don't want to do that. Let that stuff dry. It dries really hard and it's like almost impossible to get out, especially when sun hits it. That's why when you polish in your car, be careful about getting compound all in between the cracks and edges and stuff. It doesn't look too good when it dries. Okay, so I'm just gonna give it a little rub down. If you want to, you could get like a, a polish and wax and give it a little extra, but at this stage, cause the clear coat is only two days old, it glosses out pretty nice with the last rub of the microfiber towel. I'm going to go show you guys what we got. Let's go. So that's where I polished. As you see, the dig still shows, but it's okay. I'm just going to leave it. Most importantly is that there's no more solvent pop. Here's the original gloss from the gun. And here's where I polished. Which I'm happy with. So, that's one mirror done. Could have gone a little lower to get that dig out, but it's okay. Okay, so now I'm going to start on the deck finisher. My 2500 paper, I'm gonna wet it so it's wet, and I'm gonna start the most important piece the top. Make sure there's no dust on there, I just felt like a small stone or something. I'll wash it out again. All right, should probably speed up this part. Okay, yeah, so I just finished sanding down the whole thing by hand. I recommend hand because a machine could cause problems on this stage, you know, unless you got like a perfectly flat object. Um, so I'm gonna, actually now I'm still seeing a little bit of texture right here. But you know what? I'm gonna dry it out and see how it looks. See if we're done with this part. Just had to rinse it out there a little bit, sorry. I actually did not sand the base because it looks okay and also because no one's gonna see it it's a little wet it doesn't look bad you know when it's when it's up like this no one's no one's seen it in the car so i'm not gonna waste time on that as you can see there's still a little texture on there all up on the side here as well as under the ac vents um again that's from the original plastic let's see how the top looks the top is almost perfect but I'm just gonna give it a light sand again and then polish it out, especially this side. I wanna do this side and below the vents. And that's it. I'm gonna go with that. I don't wanna spend too much time on this. 
that's the next thing about hydrodipping you got to balance your time you know it's one thing to be a perfectionist but nothing in life is allowed to be perfect and that's a fact okay just know that that's the Murphy's Law stuff I was talking about earlier so next step is to polish it looks pretty smooth with the haze there's a few little glossy spots on the lower parts of the texture but it looks pretty good and a phone call Yes, yeah, son, morning. I almost finished polishing out. I'll be done in literally five minutes. Sure, by the time you reach, I'll be done long time. Yeah, bro, later. That was the customer coming for his parts now. That was a close call. You guys are seeing the full works right here. PPE. You guys see it from start to finish. Let's, let's install it on this car too and see how it looks. Remember, spin off of the edge. I'm spinning off of this edge. And when I'm ready, I'm going to spin off of this edge. But this edge is rounded, so it's not so bad if I spin into it. But this sharp edge here, you want to make sure that this is spinning off. Yo, I can't stress that enough. I'm telling you guys, I've had some bad things happen with guys working for me who spun it into the edge, even after teaching them. I just can't preach it enough. Woo! You saw that? You saw that? Saw that edge up there. That's another thing you want to hold on really tightly. You saw I caught that edge there by mistake. That was the top of the AC vent. Because I'm spinning this way and I caught it like that. Man, you got to be really careful. You got to hold on tight and just be careful. Concentrate. So, on pieces that are as narrow as this, where you can't avoid either edge, you could spin the, the disc like alongside it, like lengthways. Because if you go do it sideways, either way it's going to catch. More than likely, depending on how you angle the disc. Alright, so that's it. I'm not going to torture you guys anymore. I'm just going to wash it down and see how it looks. Okay, let's go see what we got. Okay, so as you guys can see here, it came out pretty good really happy with it you can't really see that texture anymore and the base actually didn't look too bad you see slight texture on the base but no one's seen that again it's in a car like this so i'm really really happy with how it came out and um yeah let's see how the install looks again i can't stress enough most clear coats especially if you're using the deltron line whether it be the 3000 or the 4000 you want to sand and polish it the day after or two days after because let's say i waited till tomorrow it wouldn't have been as easy i wouldn't have gotten through as fast as i did um, because the clay coat would have been a lot harder you don't want to do it too soon because the sponge on the machine would leave fine scratches on the clay coat so you don't want your clay coat too soft and you don't want it too hard okay so that's my advice how are you looking there at your best. Nice, huh? Eh? Look, look at the knob, how nice the knob came out too. And the centerpiece. That's gonna rest it on gently here. Yeah. So, now we're gonna do the install yeah. and see how it looks. Alright, that's one. Hey guys, as you all can tell I got old make in this video. It was a lot of work but it's worth it because I specifically made it for any of you out there who are doing hydrographics and who feel like giving up because I know what it's like, I've been there and when I was now starting up this business I had to have surgery so I had to take all of the money I had saved up and use it on my surgery because I had no health insurance. So if I could do it, 
you guys could too. Just never give up. And even though I had a lot of friends helping me out, I had to be persistent because there's so many issues. I never did any training for myself. And I wish someone was out there to put out a video like this for me. So I just want to wish you guys all the best. I want to give back because Hydrographics has done a lot for me. It's helped me to get married, start a family, and also have money to invest in other forms of business, mostly passive income. And I want to wish you guys good luck, and I hope you like the video. I wanted to teach you guys how to start with little to no money, just like I did. As time goes by, I'm going to try to include two more courses, one on plastic repairs, and the other one on advanced dipping techniques. I'm also going to give you guys a peek at this new product that I'm going to launch soon. I'll show you guys the magic. You don't want to put too much on there, right? That's real time, not sped up. You don't need any machine. You don't need to rub too much. You just apply it. And it's as easy as that. It's not cool. It's hot. Get right into it. Look at that. <laughs> That's magic, boy. You know, Vishu works by you? Nah. Works Sorry, by he lives, who lives upstairs? Sorry. Up, nah. Right, well, he had a, a, a touch on his bumper, mm -hmm. and a guy charged him, well, quoted him 1500 TT to repaint the entire bumper. True. I went there with this stuff in seconds. And took off the entire scratch. So imagine how much money that's. That's in. proper thing. That yeah. This is our amazing product. Remember, I've been in this car business for years, eh? So, but you don't know that, but I have been. So, like, a deep scratch like this won't come off. Right. Because that's all the way down. But this stuff. One day I could probably touch that for you with a brush and clay coat. Real people need to see this product. Yeah. I feel like. It's an amazing product. People invest like investors and push this so. Yeah. I'm really grateful also that you gave me the opportunity and you agreed to be in the video. I hope you like that product. Very much. I didn't think the scratches will come out so easily actually. Nice. And that's a wrap. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe.